And today I'm going to cover four methods of progression. Now there has been plenty written and there are plenty of videos out there that cover how you should structure workouts, how you should select exercises, and how all that fits together within a week. Anybody can go in and push through a challenging workout without any concern for what's gonna happen the next week or even the next month. But if you want to keep growing consistently and make sure that you don't stagnate and that you don't hit these long, stubborn plateaus, you have to know how each workout is going to build off of the one before it to keep you growing. That is the crux of programming, of balancing stress and recovery, and that's ultimately how we keep this train on the rails. I chose all of these methods because they're very easy to follow. Some of them you could say are idiot proof. So these are my four favorite methods of progression for developing strength and muscular size. So the first method of progression is a good old fashioned linear progression. Now these are normally associated with fives based programs that are oriented towards novices like starting strength. Now fives are a plenty good starting point for anybody if you're going to run an LP, but you don't necessarily need to do that. As long as the sets and reps stay constant and you're adding a small amount of weight every session, you are in linear progression territory. Now the reason that LPs work so well for novices is because they recover a lot faster. So every workout that creates a new stress creates a new adaptive response that lengthens the amount of time that they can keep adding five or 10 pounds every single workout. As you get more advanced, all you need to know is that you need more recovery. So that just means pushing the hard efforts further apart. Instead of squatting three times a week where you add five or 10 pounds each time, now you might need to do it once per week. And you can even keep the frequency up by populating those other workouts with different thresholds or recovery-based work. And that gets you into DUP or heavy light medium territory. And that's basically what the Texas method is. It's the intermediate answer to something like starting strength that allows the linear progression to keep going. So you can think of it as linear progression with extra steps. I've also used it on programs where if I'm doing one lift per day in the week, let's say I'm squatting, benching, deadlifting all across three different days, I might work up linearly, getting from easy to medium to hard in that time, and then you have a decision to make. You can either reset and start again, you can uh, continue adding weight after a brief deload to allow yourself to clear out and keep going, or you can change the set and rep protocol. The important thing when using a linear progression scheme is the timeline. Are you going to make the smallest sustainable jump you can and run it as long as you can? Or are you going to progress linearly in a much shorter timeline before you deload or reset to allow recovery and then shift to a different threshold? The bottom line is fixing the work and using the weight to drive progress is a linear method of progression. And those too light workouts tend to be not substantial enough to create an adaptive stress by adding a plus set at the end, basically taking the last set for an AMRAP, just like you do in 531, just like you do in Juggernaut, just like you do in the Grayskull LP. And that's one of the reasons why fives are kind of the default rep range for linear progressions. There's just enough of a strength endurance component to them that they can be taken into the weeds a little bit longer. Our second method of progression is wave loading. So the main idea, stress increases for several weeks, usually about three weeks before resetting. Classical periodization is usually start very high volume, like five sets of 10, and in a very linear straight line fashion, you decrease the amount of work, uh, the amount of sets and reps you do, and increase the weight. So Juggernaut moves in three week waves where if the first phase is the tens phase, it'll be five sets of 10, three sets of 10, then one set of 10, and the weight will get progressively heavier before dramatically resetting in the eights phase, where again, you're at five sets of eight, three sets of eight, one set of eight, and the weight gets progressively heavier in that time. And you can actually get a little creative with how you apply them. But with all things programming, don't get too creative because there really are no bonus points for it. There've been enough examples of successful and useful methods of progression. The main feature of a program is to balance the stress that you're going to adapt to versus the recovery you need for that adaptation to take place. So the next form of progression is flat loading. Now with flat loading, you're going to keep the load the same or similar throughout several training sessions or even several weeks before bumping up into the next weight bracket. Now, sometimes that does have a deload or a restorative week in between. So one of the reasons I wanted to point this out is because it will give insight 
to what goes on in like a more, now you're going to see pretty big jumps from workout to workout, especially if you're going multiple times a week. This might represent a three session per week program where you're going from small to medium to large workouts. But the idea is everything is kept in this band and you might be bouncing around within that. And the idea is to build volume. So in this accumulation phase, you're accumulating work before moving into something like a transmutation or like a strength transition phase where everything shifts up into the next bracket. Now, a more common method of flat loading would be something like a linear application or step loading where the weight stays the same for, uh, for several sessions before bouncing up into the next bracket. I'm convinced the reason we don't see a lot more of it is because it's not sexy. People want to drive the weight up, up, up without end. And this requires humbling yourself and keeping everything in this tight, predefined threshold to make sure that you actually adapt to the weight before you've earned the right to grow out of it. Now, before you just start chasing load, in my opinion, the best and most underutilized is volumizing. So every week, the number of sets you're doing is going up. Now, yes, you can increase volume by adding reps. It just doesn't make as big of a hit and it's harder to continuously add reps because that increases the fatigue of the individual set. One additional set makes a much bigger impact than one additional repetition. You could absolutely apply a flat loading paradigm to it where weight stays the same and volume goes up every week. I actually prefer to keep the weight increasing and just to do so subtly. And what that does is it creates this type of wave structure, which we've already gone over. We see a marginal increase in weight, but we'll go from three to four to five sets and that progression. And understand that this is work nobody's doing because they don't like it. It's not because it's not strength specific. It's not because it's fluff work or pump work. It's because it's hard. So if you commit yourself to this and you run through it, I guarantee you are going to start your next strength cycle with an entirely rejuvenated sense of purpose. Your physical ability is going to be through the roof. You're going to come in just absolutely crushing it. So this is my favorite scheme and not in that this is the best way to prep for a meet when you're six weeks out, but because this is the best, uh, best way to perpetually set yourself up for success to focus on this in the off season, to focus on this at the start of each strength cycle, this is how you set yourself up for unprecedented growth.